Hello all, uh, welcome to the sixth practice set of the SED series. Uh, now based on a lot of requests from you all, I'm going to take up specifically questions on trigonometry in this episode. Okay, uh, let's get started here. Uh, we have a triangle ABC such that these two sides uh, are equal, right? This symbol shows that those two sides are equal. Uh, the length of this side AB is 20, the length of side BC is 24, and we have to find sine of x, sine of this angle. Now, since these two sides are equal, right, uh, it's an isosceles triangle, right? In an isosceles triangle, the opposite sides are equal and the opposite angles are also equal, correct? So, this angle will also be x degrees, okay? Now, let's talk a perpendicular from point A to the side BC, right? Now, when we draw a perpendicular from this point, it bisects this side into two equal parts. That's the property of an isosceles triangle, correct? So this side becomes 12, half of 24. So this side becomes 12. Now, obviously, if we look into this right angle triangle, right, we have to find sine of x. So let's concentrate on this triangle now. A, B, and C. This is 90 degrees. This is 12. This side is given to be 20. Right, and we have to find sine of x. Now, sine of x is nothing but AC over AB, right? Opposite over hypotenuse. So, AC over AB. The length of AB is already 20. We just have to find the length of AC. Then we can use Pythagoras theorem. So, when we use the Pythagoras theorem, we can say Suppose uh, this is y, right? So y square plus 12 square is equal to 20 square, correct? And then we solve for y. So y square is equal to 400 minus 144, which is equal to 256. And hence y is equal to 16. So this length AC is 16, correct? So sine of x is AC over AB, so 16 over 20, which is nothing but 4 over 5. So sine of x is 4 over 5. Just to quickly reiterate, right, we observe that this is an isosceles triangle, hence these two sides are equal, these two angles are equal, we drop the perpendicular, this perpendicular will bisect it into two equal halves, so this side becomes 12. So we get a right angle triangle with this side as 12, this as 20, and we use the Pythagoras theorem to find the length of this side, and then we use sine of x to get 4 over 5. Um, question number 2. Sine of 5x minus 10 degrees is equal to cos of 3x plus 16 degrees, and we have to find the value of x, right? Now before we get started in this question, let's take a quick look at a right angle triangle. So let's say that we have a right angle triangle, okay, A, B, and C, and this is the 90 degrees here, and let's say that this angle is X, and this angle is Y, right? Now, sine of X, sine of X will be equal to BC over AB. BC over AB, right? Sine of X is the opposite over hypotenuse, so BC over AB. Uh, let's look at cos of Y. Cos of Y would be adjacent over hypotenuse, so BC over AB. Correct? So in a right angle triangle like this, where obviously one angle is 90 degrees, and the second angle is x, and the third angle is uh, y, sine of x and cos of y are equal, right? These two are equal. This is also bc over AC, ab, and this is also bc over ab. Hence, the point I'm trying to make is that if somebody tells us that sine of an angle is equal to cos of the other angle, then it means that those two angles are complementary. Only then that can happen, right? If sine of an angle is equal to the cos of another angle, then it means that the two angles are complementary or basically the sum of the two angles will be 90 degrees. So x plus y is equal to 
90 degrees. X plus Y is equal to 90 degrees because they are a part of the right angle triangle. So let's get back to this question here. Somebody is telling us that sine of this angle is equal to cos of this angle. It means that these angles would be complementary. It means that this angle plus this angle would be equal to 90 degrees. We can write that equation and then solve for x. So 5x minus 10 plus 3x plus 16 is equal to 90 degrees, right? So we get 8x plus 6 is equal to 90 degrees. We get 8x is equal to 84 degrees or x is equal to 84 divided by 8 or 21 divided by 2 or 10.5 degrees. Right, so just to quickly reiterate, what we are saying is that if sine of an angle is equal to the cos of the other angle, then those two angles are complementary or basically their sum is equal to 90 degrees. So this plus this is equal to 90 degrees and we use that to solve for the value of x and the value of x in this case comes out to be 10.5 degrees. Next question. We have a right triangle ABC such that uh, angle C is 90 degrees and angle A is x degrees. Cos of x is given to be 3 over 5. The length of BC, the actual length of BC is 12 and we have to find the length of AC, right? Okay. Now cos of x, we know cos of any angle is adjacent over hypotenuse. So cos of x is nothing but AC over AB, right? Now we don't know the actual length of these triangles, we just know the ratio, right? So let's say that this side is 3x and this side is 5x, correct? Because only then the ratio will be 3x over 5x will be 3 over 5, correct? So <clears throat> we can use the Pythagoras theorem to find this length, right? Let's say this length is y, right? Now, <clears throat> by the Pythagoras theorem, we will have y square plus 3x whole square is equal to 5x whole square. Correct? Pythagoras theorem. We can solve for y. So y square will be equal to 25x square minus 9x square is equal to 16x square. So y will be equal to 4x. So this length will be equal to 4x. Correct? So we got the lengths. This is 3x, this is 5x, this is 4x. Right? But we don't know what is x. But they have given us that the length of BC is 12. So it means that this 4x is equal to 12. So this 4x is equal to 12. You get the value of x as 3. And hence, this length would be 3 times 3, which is 9. So the length of AC would be 9. Right? Just to quickly reiterate, right? We got the cos of x is AC over AB. We don't know the actual length. Let's say that this was 3x and this was 5x. We use the Pythagoras theorem to solve for BC in terms of x. And then they have given us the actual length. We got the value of x. And we can plug in back here to get the length of AC. Uh, question number four. We have a circle with center O and uh, we have a point P on the circle. Uh, this angle is K pi and the coordinates of this point P are minus half and root 3 over 2. So minus 1 over 2 comma root 3 over 2 are the coordinates of this point P and we have to find the value of K. Right. Now, the first thing which comes to our mind is that we drop a perpendicular from this point to the x-axis, correct? And essentially, this is nothing but minus half, right? The x-coordinate of this point, which is this point, this is minus half, and the y-value is root 3 over 2, correct? So if we look at this triangle here, 
right? So this is minus half, this is point O, this is point P, let's say this point is T, and this is root 3 over 2, correct? Now, clearly, we can use tan because we have the opposite and we have the adjacent. And let's say that this angle is x. So tan of x degrees is equal to opposite over adjacent. So root 3 over 2 divided by minus half, which is minus root 3. Correct. So the tan of this angle is minus root 3. Now we know that tan of 60 degrees is equal to root 3, right? We know that. We also know that whenever we are dealing with 180 degrees, uh, that function remains the same. So basically, tan of 180 degrees plus minus theta is equal to tan theta. Correct? Now, we are in the second quadrant. What is the value of tan here? The value of tan here will be negative because it's like perpendicular over adjacent. This is positive and this is negative. So tan will be negative in the second quadrant. Correct? So essentially, if we look at this, then this angle would be 120 degrees because tan of 180 degrees minus 60 degrees will be equal to tan of 60 degrees, right? Because tan of 180 plus minus theta is tan theta. So whenever we are dealing with 180s, tan remains tan, right? So it will become tan of 60 degrees. However, since we are in the second quadrant, right? And tan is negative here, so we put a negative sign here, right? So basically what we are saying is that tan of 120 degrees will be equal to tan of minus of tan of 60 degrees, which is equal to minus of root 3. Hence, this angle k pi will be equal to 120 degrees. So k pi is equal to 120 degrees, correct? Uh, you know pi is equal to 180 degrees. So k is equal to 120 degrees divided by 180 degrees, which is equal to 2 over 3. So just to quickly reiterate, right, when we were given this question, we concentrated on this right angle triangle, right? And since we had the opposite and the adjacent, we used the tan function, and the value of tan came out to be minus root three, right? And we know that tan of 60 is root three. We also know that tan of 180 minus 60 will be, will be minus of tan of 60, which is minus of root three. It means that this angle would be 120 degrees, because tan of 120 degrees will also come out to be minus root 3. And tan of 120 degrees is given to be as k pi. We equate those two to get the value of k. Now question number 5, which is essentially a continuation of the previous question. So as we just saw, we found the value of k, uh, which came out to be 2 over 3, right? So k is 2 over 3, and in this situation, they are asking us to find the value of cos of k plus 1 pi, right? So cos of k plus 1 pi is nothing but cos of k pi plus pi, right? Now cos of k pi is here. Let's look at the angle. So this is the k pi angle. And then we are adding pi more to the angle. So we're doing 180 degrees more. We're doing 180 degrees more. So this will be our angle, right? So this angle is k pi. So this whole angle from here to here would be k pi plus pi, right? Because pi is nothing but 180 degrees. So we were here and 180 degrees more. So we're looking at this triangle here, correct? Let's focus on this triangle here. Okay, this is O and let's say this point is p dash so this is p dash and this point is t dash this point is t dash okay uh, now this will be the same as ot so this is half right and this is the same as root 3 over 2 so this is 
minus root 3 over 2. Now cos of this angle would be OT dash over OP dash. Correct? We are finding the cos of this angle. So OT dash over OP dash. OT dash is half. We have to find OP dash. We can use Pythagoras theorem again. And let's say that this value is y. So half square plus minus root 3 over 2 whole square is equal to y square. Square of this plus the square of this is equal to square of this. This is 1 over 4. This is 3 over 4 is equal to y square. So y is equal to 1. So basically this value becomes 1. This is 1. So this is 1. So cos of k plus 1 pi is half over 1, which is equal to half. Okay, just to quickly reiterate, they asked us to find the value of this. This is nothing but k pi plus pi. k pi angle is already given, and we're adding pi more or 180 degrees more to that. So we're adding 180 degrees more. We'll come in the fourth quadrant, right? When we come in the fourth quadrant, this is the triangle we are looking for. This side is already half because it's the same as this side. This side is minus 3 over 2 because this is the same as this side. We use the Pythagoras theorem to find the length of this hypotenuse and then we can find the cos of this angle which is adjacent over hypotenuse. So half over 1 is equal to half. Hey folks, uh, hopefully you like the video. Uh, keep practicing. Do like and subscribe. Uh, see you in the next session.